What's up guys? Welcome back to David's Feed. In this episode, we go road cruising for snakes and find multiple species, including an incredible monocle cobra that had a venomous surprise in store. So we're just on a scooter cruising slowly down this huge hill. It's really steep downhill, so we don't even need to turn on the engine. We're just kind of rolling slowly down the hill, hoping that we find some snakes crossing the road. It's late in the afternoon. There should be a bunch of snakes active. We'll get back to you when we find something. Road cruising for snakes in Southeast Asia is not always easy. It can take a long time to find something. Not exactly what we're looking for, but for a while, all that we saw on this particular drive was macaques and langurs. However, it is way more relaxing than being out in the thick of the forest, and when you finally see a snake, the feeling is so exciting. Okay, quickly, before we get into the action, please drop the video a like. It really supports the channel and we appreciate it greatly. Thank you. All right, so we've just spotted on the road here a very common but a very iconic species. They're not overly fast, so there's no need to really rush too much. This is a Asian vine snake, a Hetula prasina. Very common in the area here. Um, this is the first one we found during the day though. Usually we find these at night sleeping on vegetation because they are a diurnal species that isn't active at night. At night they just curl up on small branches and trees. That's a big one too. Yeah, this one's a pretty good size. Usually they're smaller than this. Um, this one would be about 1.2, 1.3 meters maybe. A bit bigger than that. Look how long the tail is. Yeah, true. They're very thin and very elongated. So if you stretch that all the way out, that's more like 1.5. They are really cool snakes that are usually very docile. As you can see, he's making no attempt to bite, but when they are threatened, they will flare up their neck like this, exposing that bluish, blackish, checkered pattern. And normally they will just be plain green when they're not being defensive. Another thing they do is they leave their tongue extended when they feel threatened, like it's doing right now. And that, when they're in like grasses and vegetation, makes them a lot harder to spot because the front of the tongue kind of simulates like a blade of grass or something. Another really unique feature about the snake is, if you look at the eyes, I'm gonna carefully, gently grab it so you can see better. The pupils, they're actually horizontal, whereas most other snakes have either round or vertical elliptical pupils. And it's really unusual for snakes to have horizontal pupils like that. And that helps these snakes, if you look directly from the front, they have like telescopic vision. They have very, very good eyesight compared to most other snakes. And these are one of the few species which hunt almost only using eyesight, whereas most other colubrids will go around picking up smells from prey and tracking the smell and then finding the prey. But these, they'll just sit on like low hanging vegetation, looking around for little lizards and stuff, and then actively like creep up on them disguised as a vine. You'd probably say their main prey is lizards, but they also eat a yeah. range of other stuff, don't they? Yeah, when they get large like this one, they will sometimes also take small birds and frogs, but even at this size, I would say the very majority of their diet would be agamid lizards and geckos. These are mildly venomous, but their bite is really not of any danger to humans, and they're also rear fanged, so they would need to hold on and chew the venom into you. And the worst effect that it may have is like slight redness or itchiness. Really yeah. nothing to worry about. We should probably move it off the road because this snake being so long, slender, and relatively slow moving, they're very, very commonly seen as roadkill just because they're so thin. If you're driving at even a relatively slow speed, they can be very tricky to see. 
especially as their sort of main defense mechanism is just to sit still. If you come across one of these and you see it in the bush, it will just sit there and just rely on its camouflage. With the camera and I walk just a few steps down and place it on the road, you'll see how hard it is to see. Until you get closer and then it's too late. Or they have something that they want to climb onto. They can extend their body exceptionally far to reach for that. As you can see, he's trying to climb on that branch right now. And he is able to reach really far up. With almost like half of his body suspended. Look how still he's keeping his head. I can like move his body. His head is staying mostly in the same place. That's like about a third of its body that is completely suspended. Really amazing. So we're just gonna let him go in these bushes over here and you'll see how quickly they blend in and disappear. So this is day three of our road So this is day three of our road cruising mission to try and find a cobra because we've been looking a lot and cobras are really hard to find if you're specifically looking for them. You do see them dead on the road relatively often. So our plan is to just keep driving roads in the late afternoon and mornings. So far we haven't had any luck. No cobras so far. Yep, and this is our last day here, so it's our last opportunity to get one. And uh, we haven't been waking up early enough to go in the morning, so late afternoon it is. This is our road cruising mobile. Trusty machine. Let's, Let's go. go. So off we went into the late afternoon sun. To be honest, neither of us were very optimistic about our chances of finding a Cobra. We'd already searched several afternoons and evenings, which can be very demoralizing. All right, so we've just reached the spot where we're gonna be road cruising. There's a dog, very annoying. Anyway, we're at the spot where Rupert has seen a lot of monocle cobras crossing the road before in the past because he actually used to live in Trang. We've just stopped the bike on the side of the big highway here because we've attached the GoPro to the front of our bike. Hello. This is the dog that chased us when we came here the other night. Yeah, we came here the <laughs> other night and he just started chasing our scooter. <laughs> our road cruising didn't start off very well. I lost my hat in the wind after just a few seconds. But after picking it back up, we got going again and cruised for quite a while longer. We went through different terrain, villages, plantations, and even a bit of forest, keeping our eyes keenly peeled on the road at all times. All we'd seen during the drive was one lizard crossing the road, not even a deer was snake. As the sun continued to disappear and wind the clock down on prime cobra hours, we turned down a very quiet rural road, which was when it happened. Keep watching as things get very exciting very quickly. Okay, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. All right, so this is a monocle cobra, one of the snakes we were really hoping to find. He was just coming up on this curve here and I spotted him just in the little ditch next to the road. Oh wow, it's, it's huge. Yeah, really fired up as well. Wow. Look at that. He's making that loud hissing noise to try and intimidate me. Beautiful snake, really big one too. Usually they're not this big. I've seen them before, but the ones I caught previously were a lot smaller. 
Same, same. I've only seen like, this is the largest one I've ever seen in Trang. Wait, let me just turn off the ignition of the bike real quick so we don't kill our battery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, what do you think of that, man? This is amazing. I need to steady my hands, I'm still shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and Cobra is probably one of the best snakes to handle, right? Yeah, I think we've got some company. I hear some motorbikes pulling up. But yeah, as you were saying, Cobra is one of the best snakes to handle. Because Cobras, like most other snakes, they can only focus on one point really well at a time. They can't like multitask very well. So if you get their attention on one point, you can pretty much handle them and manipulate them in many ways without being bit. See how he's focused on my knee right now. Whatever my mo knee movement does, he will follow with his head, see? When I move, he moves. And that's basically what I'm using to exploit their behavior in a way so I can handle them like this. See? By, now I'm gonna keep his attention on my face. And by doing so, there's more people coming. Is this boss turning in here? I think he is. Yeah, he is. Okay, he didn't seem to care very much. That was good. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, these kind of snakes. They often live in areas where people do. Yeah, they're very common around human dwellings, which is why they're actually a pretty hard species to find if you're out in the forest actively looking for them. If you're coming to Thailand or Asia and want to see cobras, one of the best ways to actually find them is just to cruise around like roads like these that are kind of near human dwellings with plantations and like water that. around as well yeah they're usually never too far from water because they love to eat frogs but one like this would be feeding mostly on uh... rodents other snakes monocled cobras are also big snake eaters which is something a lot of people don't realize but they will readily eat other snakes as well as pretty much anything they can overpower they're not picky snakes the Thai name is Ngu Hao, which means like barking snake or something like that. To what extent would you say this snake is uh, all bark and no bite? Um, a little bit. They do, as you can see, put on quite a large show to try and ooh, intimidate me rather than actually trying to bite, but I wouldn't want to test it too much because they definitely will bite at some point. But mostly it's just a defensive show. Yeah, for you know, sure. I've worked with this species quite a bit and I've noticed that a lot of the time that they strike, they actually strike with their mouth shut. Yeah, for sure. Making a loud hissing noise in the process. Definitely not wow, one. Look how big this one is. This one's like 1 1.3, 1 1.2 something. If you've got to stretch all the way out, yeah, like 1 1.2, 1 1.3. And it's so thick compared to the other elapids we've been seeing. Yeah, for sure. This one's in really good health. I bet he's been finding a lot of rodents and frogs and stuff around here. Yeah. Any scars on it? Any ticks? Not that I can... Oh, there. Oh. See, now he's opening his mouth, which means he's getting a little fed up, which means I need to be extra careful right now. But one interesting thing about this species that not many people know is it's actually been known to spit venom. Yes, they can. Some monocled cobras do have the ability to spit, but unlike spitting cobras, where they have a physical feature in the fang, like the groove at the front where they can spray the venom out of, these ones just have normal fangs and they angle their head upwards and kind of fling the venom at you rather than spit. It's like they're halfway down the evolutionary path. Yeah, maybe in like thousands and thousands of years, monocle cobras will evolve into spitting cobras. Look forward to that day. <laughs> Got another guy on a motorbike. He seems a little interested. Anyway. Luckily, these don't tend to spit often, yeah. so we don't need to get the protective goggles out for this guy. And even the ones of these that are able to spit, they're not by any means as good, as good at it as the spitting cobra species, meaning they could only spit maybe like two feet or three feet. And to put things in perspective, the uh, spitting cobras in Asia are way less evolved than the spitting cobras in, say, Africa. True, true, very true. I've worked with Naja Sumatrana. Uh, down here in Trang and and that species can barely spit more than a meter Especially barely at like head height for like a six-foot human, you know caught a lot of Siamese spitting cobras, which 
can spit a lot better than the Sumatrana, but yeah. it's still not nearly as good as some of my African spitting cobra species I have back home. Which are ridiculous. Yeah, like the red spitting cobra from Africa can hit you with like precision from meters away. And they spit more in a jet, don't they? Yeah, the Asian cobras spit in like a, a big fine mist. mist. Yeah. So it's interesting, our uh, Asian species just are a little less evolved. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing again, what I was talking about briefly before. How I'm keeping its attention on my face, which is allowing me to move my hands around and hold it without him really noticing that what's going on. Whoa, dude, you charmed the snake, man. Yeah, this Wait. is exactly how the snake charmers in India and stuff do their practices, by just keeping the attention on the flute and swaying it to music, giving it the impression that um, the snake is dancing to the music when actually it's just following the movements of the flute, same as the snake is following the movements of my head and concentrating on my face. Yeah, let's get you a trombone. Now, monocle cobras, just like the majority of other cobra species, have a primarily neurotoxic venom, which attacks your nervous system and essentially paralyzes you. And it's a quite fast-acting venom too, so not something I want to try. Although they also have some cytotoxic components in the venom. I've seen a lot of bites from cobras also developing some necrosis and local cell destruction. Yeah, it's nasty. Yeah, just because something is like primarily neurotoxic doesn't mean it can't have a lot of other effects as well. It, the venom is not like one specific venom, it's like a concoction of many different toxins. Just one of the most severe ones is of course the neurotoxic agents in it because that's what's going to shut down your respiratory system and kill you the quickest. Oh. And along with the... Uh... He just spat venom. He just spat. Yeah. Oh wow, look at this. He just spat. Zoom in on my pants before it dries up. You can see this U-shape of I venom right on my pants here. Just as we were speaking about it, that some monocle cobras do have the ability to spit. And that's the first time I've ever seen that. But this wasn't going to be the last time. Check the video link in the description to see a video where David gets spat in the eye by the same species. I've seen it a few times before with captive specimens, but never in the wild. Wow, okay, just careful of your, uh, your face, all right? Yeah. That was uh, a little bit unexpected. That definitely was really chunky. And of course, when given the chance, they do try to just escape rather than attack or anything like that. They're very peaceful animals by themselves. It's just when they feel threatened and fear for their life that they defend themselves. But you can see even a snake as defensive as this one calms down within a couple minutes of catching it. This one is now probably not going to hood up a single more time. And uh, they look very different when they're not hooded, don't they? Yeah, they just look like any other rat snake. A bit more thick and short compared to rat snakes, but overall, if they weren't hooding up, I can definitely see how people would confuse them. Yeah, a lot of like people who aren't like actively into snakes don't realize that cobras just look like any other snake when they aren't hooded up. Yeah, for sure. But you can still see the uh, defined monocle. Oh, he's opening his mouth at me a little bit. I'm catching its attention here. You can get a good look at that head. So it's clear to see why this species is called the monocle cobra. Yeah, because right on their hood they have that distinct round monocle pattern, which is how they got their name. Not all individuals have it though. In some localities, you also get monocle cobras which have like sort of a horizontal banding pattern or some don't even have pattern at all. So it's not a sure way to identify the species. Some don't have that. In one part of Thailand, in Supanburi, you actually even get a very light colored morph of the snake, which is as juvenile, almost white. And then when he grows up, they turn into like a very light tan beige sort of color. Yeah, and the ones I've seen around uh, your old house in Hua Hin, out in the yeah. sort of hills there, always had banding pattern. Yeah, there's mosquitoes here. All right, well, I'm gonna get out my camera, do a little bit of photography with this, because although it is a common species, 
I haven't caught awfully many of them just because they are very hard to find when you're specifically looking for them so we definitely got very lucky here today yeah and this is definitely the largest one I've ever caught yeah I was starting to kind of lose hope it's already almost sunset soon we've been cruising for hours yeah, I can't tell you how much time I've spent cruising looking for these in the evening and come up short despite having previously calmed down the snake did not take kindly to David's camera and got very defensive again just listen to the sound it makes So I think I got a few photos that I'm happy with. We're about to release it. I'm just going to bring it back to where we found it. On the other side of the road, it's always good to release snakes on the side of the road that you found them so they don't just try and cross the road again. Because if they wanted to get to one side of the road and you bring them back to where they started, they're just going to cross again and have a whole another chance of being run over by a car. All right, so we'll just put them in the bank over here. This is the side we found him on. Let him cruise on his way. So big when you see it like fully stretch yeah, out like that. Yeah, it's a really impressive snake. Cool. Thanks for watching this video guys and special thanks for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure if you're not already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss next week's video. It'll be out Thursday afternoon, European time.